Uh, right, uh, so after, after quite enriching and as well uh, interesting sessions, now it's time for, for us to move on with uh, the discussion. So the discussion, the topic is mission impossible, possible or impossible, overcoming difficulties and achieving success, every teacher's role in language learning. So as we know, language, uh, a learning language, a new language is a challenging task, not only for students, but also for educators. Uh, language coordinators, decision makers as well. And today we will be uh, discussing the challenges that students encounter when learning languages and hopefully how all parties involved can possibly address them. Uh, let, uh, let me introduce the panelists. So the first is Ahmed Vitanietza, alumni of Mission Possible, a branch organization of Teach for All and Cambridge IGCSE and IB Biology Educator. Hello, I'm Pierre Sadiere, our Diploma Program Coordinator and Head of Languages of the Secondary School as well, TLK and French B teacher, and uh, she's going to provide some insight in the role of the language coordinator at this topic. Hello. Uh, Christine Argovans is an experienced educator, uh, the preschool and uh, primary ELL coordinator at the Super International School. Good afternoon. Then Professor Anindra Wodinje, Director of Professional Bachelor and Master's Study Programs Teacher at the University of Reading. Hello. And as well, Ivita Ratnika, Ratnika, a member of uh, River City Council, like a language and literature teacher and a poet as well. Okay. Right, uh, so we're going to rules. Rules are quite simple. We're going to have this discussion in open manner and audience are highly welcome to ask questions and give remarks. Maria is here and Maria is going to help as well with uh, passing a microphone. Yeah, one of these microphones we're having here. Yeah. So if you are having questions, you're highly welcome to ask. And as well, those uh, attendees that are joining via Zoom, you're highly welcome to write your questions and so if needed, you can raise your hands and as well going to be a floor for you to, uh, to speak. So I believe we'd like to start uh, by setting borders and so uh, we see uh, quite a uh, wide range of uh, expertise in here. So the first question that uh, is in my mind is what does the term language entail and so what are the primary challenges of learning it in the context of your field? I believe Anit as a teacher might, might start with, with this. Just put me on the spot as you <laughs> promised. I promised. <laughs> um, yeah, so some of you may be already aware of our workshop where we uh, talked about this. Uh, I previously taught biology in my native language, which was Latvian. So when I started teaching in this school, it turned out that biology uh, is so much about vocabulary. Uh, there's so much, and uh, it was really difficult for my students to understand. Uh, especially because they're also second language learners. So that's my biggest challenge, how to, yeah, how to use strategies that help with language learning as well as teach biology. So don't mind this. So then uh, here comes two targets. One is uh, subject related language and uh, others, uh, others keywords or here or let's say or vocabulary itself, such as trees, plants, etc. Or as well, uh, as well, here is a focus on uh, on action words and building, building ability to comprehend and as well produce language, so then production of language as well. It depends on the level. Definitely with lower levels in English, it's just basic terminology. With higher levels, of course, we have to understand what is this question actually asking you. So we need to talk about common terms and how to interpret those. So there's all aspects involved. Yeah, thank you. We still are. What's your what's your perspective as a language coordinator? Uh, first, to add to what uh, Anita just said, um, the the purpose of communication is is a key aspect, uh, and and it brings up us back to the title of this conference, you know, from chit chat to academic fluency, because we might have students who appear to be very comfortable uh, in interacting in everyday life. Um, but um, then we have different types of uh, academic uh, uh, ways of communicating uh, in different uh, subject areas uh, which are going to add complexity to the language and how they should acquire this language. So 
uh, this, this is to add to, to what you're saying. You were saying from the perspective of a coordinator, that's a little bit of a bigger thing. Do you want me to expand on that or maybe we'll leave that for later? Yeah. My turn, okay. I, for those uh, of you who kind of might have missed part of the introduction, I work with, I'm the ELL coordinator from preschool all the way up to grade five. Now, in preschool, so from two and a half years of age, it's a lot easier learning language. Uh, although most of them have joined our school with having their mother tongue, not all of them have an established mother tongue either. So it's very important to develop their mother tongue first. We have a very good mother tongue program here at Exubity. Uh, so um, they're learning language kind of together along two paths. So they're trying to learn content in English, but they're also getting that same content in Latvian or Russian. So they're the two mother tongues that we offer at the moment. Um, younger grades, it's often easier to teach language because you're teaching language to language learners anyway. So grade one, kindergarten, they're learning the alphabet. It's a, a, I wouldn't say it's simple, uh, but then it becomes more complicated if you have language learners who join you in grades four, five, six, and so on. So if they're coming to our school without any language, then the ELL department, we are the ones who try and help them uh, meet the, the mainstream classroom and that has its own um, sort of uh, pros and cons so we can't be with them the whole time. Uh, at the moment we have two dedicated lessons where we work with students for two hours a week but we also try and push into classrooms to support students so we are trying to teach them also the content language not just grammar and vocabulary and how to ask to go to the bathroom they're, they're the very essential things of course that they need to know if they're, if they're joining our school um, but then it's trying to help them and um, modifying and making uh, differentiating tasks so that they can also learn the content but they can learn it at their level so if they're learning about government for example uh, there could be different reading um, tasks for the different needs within that class. I could keep going, but I'll stop there. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And uh, how about uh, research and, and uh, let's say recent research findings on this uh, on this topic? Oh, <laughs> yeah, I wasn't ready to answer the first question. But <laughs> let's move on with the, 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 yeah. the, the, the question. Uh, so, uh, as as to me, language actually is first of all um, the means. It's it's not a goal. And it means uh, of uh, what was mentioned already before, it's a communication and uh, communication uh, involving also interaction. Uh, so we can really use it for the, for the sake of uh, getting information. Yeah? Uh, or learning content also to start to wrap up. As to research, well, as to research, of course, uh, concerning the language research, uh, all brain work things, how, how, how our brain works uh, when uh, acquiring the language is important. Also, um, language anxiety, which was already mentioned today as well, and um, language and culture, and language aspects more prevailing. Uh, it's, it's like when we are talking about the language as such. But as I am involved in teacher education programs, then uh, I can also share the highlights of our teacher educators, future teacher educators, future um, teachers, and their research. Then basically we, we have it on three levels. Uh, on the first level, bachelor level, students are usually dealing with development of language skills, uh, development of language skills and uh, how uh, to look for uh, different um, approaches, different strategies, structures. And uh, I'm really also pleased that uh, the research of our students involves such things like cooperative learning, like CLIL, 
also ESP, like sp finding out students' specific, uh, special needs, um, and, um, and also project work. Uh, on the master's level, uh, our researchers deal more with um, teachers and students' well-being, language teachers and students' well-being. Um, also, I would say um, on MOOCs now, which is uh, this online um, learning experience more, yeah? And on PhD level, uh, it's more like, again, going to this uh, self-regulated learning, self-directed learning, uh, also digital competence. Um, so uh, that, that's what uh, we can offer, uh, the research we can offer at our faculty. Thank you. And well, <coughs> well, I'm teaching mother tongue and, uh, and literature as well creative writing. Uh, and uh, next year I will deal with this A-level uh, Latvian literature uh, and everything what corresponds with this. Because we have not enough uh, actually materials to teach any of these subjects. And um, dealing with all those reforms uh, while still being uh, really sensitive to language as a symbol is very hard because we have a lot of students coming like uh, right now to the state gymnasiums with this uh, minority school experience of learning uh, Latvian uh, language which are with rather great grades but very poor knowledge actually and uh, sooner or later at some stage we have this problem that I need to evaluate them on the same level as my Latvians uh, like native speaker Latvians and really, I understand that I need tools to work with them on a very different level. It's like right now, my biggest problem is Sarah. Sarah is a Vietnamese girl who identifies herself with Sarah because no one can really pronounce her normal native or royal name. And, uh, uh, and she has uh, very bad grades in Latin because how she had a bad word. <laughs> and uh, there is no support, uh, like paid support for her, because she is not, she is not a, a re immigrant, or she is not a person with any specific uh, uh, learning needs, I mean, like orthopedic or something. So we have no um, box to put her in, so to speak. So I'm even trying, like, Mm, simplified <laughs> Latvian, so I have no no tools for that, and learning uh, Latvian together with her is something uh, what is my biggest challenge right now, because uh, I understand it, it's not me who will try, no one will, because it's only me who has not the full uh, teacher's uh, hours, uh, and I'm uh, so privilege to play somehow with her. But um, the, the, the most important problem on any of these levels, we have no language coordinators or anyone of that kind in the public schools. And so we have uh, students who are, I'm calling them uh, sport uh, players <laughs> with no motivation for literature, for instance. Uh, we have um, girls with uh, really like Olympic level of Latvian, so to speak. And then we have all these kind of people coming from uh, different lang linguistic experiences. And um, in a way, I envy you for having that such people who are uh, helping with a specific box, finding a specific box this person should fit in. I hope I will help Sarah at least to survive this year in school because she came with a six out of ten uh, like mark in, uh, in her papers and actually she barely understands what I am speaking in Latin. So how come teachers in previous school evaluate her so high and why? So we see that uh, the picture overall is quite complex and uh, there are multiple keywords that uh, uh, 
were highlighted and so two of them are the role of the the language coordinator and another one is that i'd like to actually start with our subject teachers. when i started working at this school i thought that my goal was to teach history as history teacher so therefore this entail facts processes maybe years and then learn let's say these ah these bits and language well latvian latvian language and literature teachers don't deal with this so therefore i do believe we'd like to consider our next question and the next question is why should subject teachers consider language aspects i do believe that we are having not only language teachers in, in, in the auditorium but as well uh, subject teachers can subject teachers like let's say biology mathematics etc right so we do have quite uh, uh, quite a tendency in, in this uh, sense so the question is going to be suitable for those that are joining via zoom and as well at the, at the venue so why should subject teachers consider language aspects because it is hard it is hard to think in in both ways for content and at the same time tie it to the language it's up to you and as well audience are highly welcome to share their views just uh, maybe a few points from my experience uh, first level is that um, i have to find a way how them how students can communicate to me how and what they know so without language that would be really difficult <laughs> Uh, also, uh, higher levels of thinking, uh, you, students need to produce some work where they communicate uh, about what are their findings, about they have to be able to analyze concepts. So without language, there's no way I, I, can, I can support them into that. Um, so, so I think language becomes a really important communicative tool. And uh, I think it's all good until a point where we realize that the language level is not so high. I think that's the problem, when, not, I mean, issue or challenge, uh, because before that, the, it's, the problem is not this big. Yeah, maybe there are questions. Yeah. As a politician, I was observing um, hours in the schools, uh, Russian schools, and uh, some of the uh, teachers invited me just to open the door and go inside, so it was not specifically prepared for pleasing of politicians, so to say. And, uh, and I was attending um, biology class in uh, grade nine, so it should be like a really good Latvian used for them, uh, because in the secondary school it's compulsory to be entirely in Latvian. And when I realized uh, how far are they uh, in understanding uh, anything about this ecological, they had something. Uh, some something about ecology on this class, and uh, I barely understood uh, that level of biology, I would say. And then I understood if the teacher was not speaking like bilingual, they had no no, no result, neither in language or in biology after this class, and so. Uh, for any of these students coming afterwards uh, to the secondary school teaching entirely in, in Latvian, they need teachers supporting them with vocabulary. Because otherwise, and correcting them, actually, because if it's only a Latvian teacher, Latvian language teacher who is making those marks, it's not correct. They hate Latvian teacher, and somehow other uh, think that they their Latvian is much be, uh, much better than it actually is. That's why I would say each teacher teaching biology, physics, math, or anything they are um, well, so they should do that. Otherwise, they are not supporting their students actually. Yeah, can I add to that? Um, yeah, and as, as you were talking about this, uh, I'm just um, thinking that really secondary schools are an oddity because. If you look at you know what happens in primary, um, where one teacher, um, and, and I'm not going to take from 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 your specialty, but um, teaches um, most um, areas of the curriculum to students, they have a much better understanding of uh, where each student is at in those different areas. 
and they come to secondary, and suddenly knowledge by some kind of magic um, is split uh, in different areas, and, and we somehow forget uh, that everything is interconnected. Uh, in fact, not just language, I would say. Um, but, uh, and, and I think also then sometimes the problem with secondary is we can lose sight of the fact that um, it's part of that holistic approach to uh, teaching and learning that that child that's, that's in front of you comes with a history um, and, and that includes their level of language whether it's in the mother tongue or in the language of instruction and, and other languages and everything else that comes with that child. And if we're not taking into account um, all the idiosyncrasies of, of the students that we have in front of us, we're, not, we're just not doing our job. Um, I do feel for the subject teachers uh, because it's true that uh, it is an extra burden and, and I can totally see that because language teachers, that is their specialty, that's what they do. Um, but language teachers have a lot to gain also from, and we were talking about clear before, uh, have a lot to gain from having purpose and, and using subject content to use language as a means rather than, than as, an, as an end. And that's where um, also teaching and learning becomes so much more meaningful. We had a presentation earlier on uh, from Daiga about uh, the SDGs um, and anything that has meat <laughs> um, in, uh, in, in what we are using language for as opposed to simply learning language for the sake of language, even though that's also a beautiful purpose. Um, certainly um, it brings all the meaning to what we do and, and what it is there for. Um, and just to finish on, because we are an IB school, um, um, so you know, the IB has a very strong message of every teacher is a language teacher. And it's a beautiful ideal, um, but of course an extremely challenging one. And of course this is why Anita is sitting here because she's one of the teachers um, as many of the teachers uh, that are here today who really is striving to achieve that that ideal but of course there is uh, there are so many different levels of complexities to that i'd just like to add a few things as well <laughs> um vocabulary sometimes vocabulary is easier to teach and sometimes it's a lot more complicated depending on how abstract the word is uh, some nouns are very easy to um, describe, explain, have a picture of. Uh, in my session, we were talking about this as well. Uh, you can find a picture of a chair. You can have lots of different chairs. Try and find a picture of democracy. <laughs> there are certain conceptual uh, understandings that are very, very difficult. And then to get students to be able to talk about that uh, is complicated even further. Uh, the other thing we as educators need to be really mindful of is not to make assumptions. We tend to think, oh, the students will know this. Will they though? And rather than making those assumptions, we should be very intentional and clear in explaining whether it's an instruction and the words we are using, those command terms. Uh, so that the student, does everyone understand this? And they're like, yeah. or in the best case, they're going to say, uh huh. Mm -hmm. Exactly. They don't want to say they don't understand that. So, here, let me explain this in a different way. What this word means, or here is a visual, or here are some sentence starters to help you frame what you want to say. Um, so, if you're even teaching students how to introduce themselves, my name is. Um, today it is, and it's very simple terms, obviously I work with little kids, um, but for them to know and be able to use that language and then use it regularly. And here, uh, what would be your advice as language coordinators uh, for, let's say, a new teacher or let's say a quite fresh graduate uh, that enters the school uh, to consider uh, the language aspect? And let's say subject teacher, what would be your advice? What to start with? For them to think about how it would be learning that in a foreign language. Because English, or whether they're learning Latvian, like Sarah, um, how would that be if I am learning this in a language that I am not familiar with? What will help me? Visuals will help me. 
some sentence starters will help me um having vocabulary there a dictionary something that i can hold on to whether it's being able to ask a friend feeling safe what have i left out to go back to what you were saying about not making assumptions formative assessments so that and that can take any number of form and you know even right questioning like uh olga showed us this morning the right type of questioning not the one that says do you understand um and uh and other types of did you want to add to that yes um so getting feedback from students on uh on on the content um a teacher that has been i feel like i've been a new teacher several times <laughs> coming here and also starting teaching uh so my first suggestion would be ask for help mm. i think that's the first but not uh, being afraid to ask for help and, and uh, uh, what would be the one that you'd like that somebody would like to ask for help if there is no uh, such a position as language coordinator well i actually first went to uh colleagues that are teaching language last year i went to a colleague that is teaching language uh, English and I asked her what is a tool you can give me that can help my students to access this and uh, she helped me with she helped me with the vocabulary list and how I can add visuals and they can add visuals and uh, because I don't know for me it felt like it seemed like a very you know straightforward and simple idea but she said that works and I trusted her and uh, yeah I keep using that still <laughs> we are going to continue with uh... Uh, with the question how does this have seems or lost the scene of uh, in teacher preparation so how do universities are addressing this question but we had a question from audience yeah thank you very much for this interesting discussion my name is olga and i'm uh, an ell teacher from um, exuberant international school and i teach in primary so i completely agree with everything that was said before um, in terms of supporting language in other subject areas and basically this is what I do and I work in collaboration with homeroom teachers so we need to come to conclusion what is the objective of the lesson of the unit and how I as a language teacher can help students to achieve that objective so there should be a purpose of the subject area but also a language purpose what means do students need to achieve the, um, less the, the objective of the lesson and um, what I would also like to throw in and maybe like to continue the discussion is that um, as much as we have to collaborate and, 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 and do it together, I think there should be a certain degree of separation in terms of assessment. So subject teachers, in my opinion, should always remember that it's the content that they're assessing, not the language. And uh, coming back to the reflection presented by um, our students in the beginning of the day, um, it is very frightening that you might be judged and as a learner of language and a learner of that subject it's you know the level of anxiety can go even more up because you're being assessed in terms of the content and you don't have the language to perfectly express what your thoughts are and your knowledge is so it, it's important to be considerate of that so it's learning new content and new content in a foreign language and in the context of international schools Right, thank you. But let's move on with the university's perspective. Yeah. Anyway, first of all, probably to wrap up what uh, Iveta mentioned and um, the, the colleagues uh, on the right, uh, I think there is a difference also uh, between languages. The Latvian language uh, teaching and learning experience in Latvia and the English. Uh, whereas, whereas I would say uh, it is very easy with English. I think that it, it, it's absolutely no problem, but with Latvian there is something that maybe uh, originally uh, we are too much concerned with accuracy and so we are somehow killing this uh, inquisition, <laughs> inquiry uh, and uh, yeah. And as to schooling and as to what university does, uh, we since 2012 we have teacher education programs with two subject teacher educations and two uh, or even three. And uh, thus, thus we really can uh, gain the possibility that uh, let's say for example, teacher uh, that is enrolling in um, chemistry program, uh, she or he can choose English or can choose Latvian uh, as a second uh, subject. Yeah, and 
and many there are very many uh, really options how it can be done and uh, this in a way makes uh, for sure uh, CLIL teaching much easier and on the other hand we also have had the experience with uh, my colleague uh, associate professor Ion Magiewicz Greenberger who is also sitting here in the in the room um, and uh, we have had uh, when uh, co competence oriented teaching and learning uh, issues started and we have had uh, several courses we were working with teachers on helping them how to how to uh, how to organize this what to do what, what should be the teachers uh, way of planning and acting yeah and the major problem that we found is cooperation everybody agrees we we need it there is necessity for this uh, how much time do you have for this uh, if school pays you oh maybe half an hour a week so uh, it is as if we need it but at the same time we are not much ready to do this and uh, what's more after this COVID uh, years even less yeah so so this this is really what is crucial uh, and uh, if we had such a cooperation what, what you also mentioned uh, or uh, olga mentioned uh, yeah it's it's like coming together and it's common planning and uh, trying to figure out how the things should be done uh, there are of course also very many good samples like uh, very many uh, grammar schools gymnasiums in Latvia and uh, not only also secondary schools practice uh, teaching subjects in several languages I also yesterday I had the teaching practice seminar in the evening and uh, students came and thought oh I was teaching uh, geography in English I was teaching history in English so uh, there are a lot of these initiatives also I do believe that here is a place as well for the management to school management to consider a specific time of course I, I, uh, if, uh, uh, if if the amount of uh, money, let's say, budget is narrow, so then uh, there might be some smart ways or creative ways, such as let's say that there are daily or weekly meetings where teachers are meeting and not to spend the time only for information delivery, because sometimes I do believe uh, this might be an email, right? <laughs> and then uh, we could have time for uh, collaboration and. Uh, and uh, I do believe that the sentence might be quite simple. Now you have 10 minutes, uh, find a partner that you are working with in the same, uh, in the same grade, let's say grade seven, and ask a question, what are you teaching and how can I help you? And unfortunately, slowly by slowly, we have to wrap up. Uh, and uh, to, to sum up, uh, what might be uh, your advice for, for teachers to, uh, to, to think about when planning the next unit to consider the languages aspect. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was, I think, already year 2015 uh, when I was uh, invited to United States for a Microsoft uh, team, for Microsoft, <laughs> Microsoft teams, for Microsoft uh, kind of uh, seminar, workshop. And, uh, and then they were posting 21st century tools or 21st century well, ideas how, how possibly we should plan. And at that time it seemed like, hmm, interesting. <laughs> but then uh, three years passed and I saw really the uh, need for this. And really it is very topical also now. And uh, what I uh, do with uh, my students in teaching learning methodology classes it's like uh, i suggest them uh, five principles how you should plan and uh, take have a look at uh, your activity that you have chosen does it have cooperation does it have knowledge construction uh, does it solve real life problems and does it use uh, ict with uh, when when it's really necessary not just because of it uh, these, these are the four items I'm usually focusing, but in this 21st century skill description, there is also self-regulation and skill communication. But at least these four, and uh, what else, they also have very nice uh, like rubric created. So how can you know uh, when your knowledge construction is zero or your knowledge construction is one, two, three, or five, when it's the highest, 
and when it's uh, really there is something is happening in the classroom. I have really found this very useful uh, as a suggestion. Right, so therefore, uh, while considering the next units you are going to plan, so first of all, the consider cooperation aspect, then um, uh, knowledge construction, uh, meaningful ICT usage, uh, the real life situations, and uh, as well self regulation by meaning this as self assessment. What's on top of that? Uh, I, I'd just like to add, um, and that perhaps fits into uh, some of the elements that you're talking about here. Uh, because we are faced, I have to mention ChatGPT, uh, because we are faced with the you know, extraordinarily um, you know, powerful uh, possibilities of ChatGPT plus, of course, uh, the dangers that come with it. Um, and, and I think it also meets what Olga was talking about before. Um, we do need to be very clear with the outcome that we are expecting. And to, and to provide the scaffolding towards that outcome. And that scaffolding you know, comes in the form of exemplars and um, sentence starters, and, and then yes, potentially collaboration with language teachers um, to work on how do I form a paragraph, to remove that need uh, to rely on tools such as ChatGPT, or, or other ways of not being completely principled um, with uh, producing my own work. So, you know, we, we do have to um, be aware of what we're asking them to do and give them the right tools to then be able to achieve what we want them to do without having to rely on things that we don't want them to use. Not to say that we can't use strategy for other things, but just not for that. <laughs> Thank you. Some more ideas? Maybe I'll add to that ChatGPT thing that uh, even if they use it, I want my students to see that they can explain what they found out there. And I think that's the most important part where even if they use it for a poster, okay, disappointing, but I'll accept it. <laughs> you, can, you can at least tell me. So what did you understand of what, uh, what uh, you, you found out? And if they can tell me, if they can answer the questions, then I guess it's fine. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, for me it was uh, the, the end goal. And that is always working backwards from the end goal. What do I want my students to know? And how will I get them there? And then will they have to explain? Will they have to justify? And what language do they need to be able to do that? And then for me also, uh, I like to focus on vocabulary, but vocabulary that is um, goes across all um, Subjects. What's the word I'm looking for? There is that word. No, 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 no. I had, I had um, another word in my mind, but I forgot. Interdisciplinary. That's the word I was looking for. Thank you. Um, so that you focus on those. There are so many vocabulary words that students need, but rather for me, uh, for language learners, I like to use those ones that I know that will come up again and again and again so that they will really be grounded in the student's uh, lexicon. Yeah, and uh, also adding to this, so that the final product, when we when start with this final product outcome that is created and it could be a kind of evaluated uh, in cooperation of several subjects so that we are not overwhelming students with this work, this work, this work, but it's one bigger project, one bigger outcome which is evaluated from all perspectives so that they see already this added value. Um, I would say the most important is to remember that take it easy. <laughs> uh, don't spoil your life with uh, thinking about each 40 minutes uh, of your life in uh, six levels or whatever. <laughs> and uh, maybe remember that education and knowledge is what exists when the electricity suddenly disappears. Because this, this obsession with using all the kind of tools and blah blah blah, I hate it deeply. Uh, because it's normally it's you should enjoy the process of teaching and learning. And uh, if it goes to a totally different uh, direction, cool. Maybe you created something new. 
but not uh, because it's if I change something in my life, it's uh, now you need to feel in this in this at least in these state schools. Sasnets are results. Whatever it is, I don't even want to know how it's called in English <laughs> because it takes too much of my time just to fill it in because I have never uh, went to any uh, lessons without having some idea what I want to uh, want to do with that. But if someone just for the in work forces me to write all those far from. Yes, far from being really true, because you need to follow some curriculum, blah, 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 blah. But really, you need to work with live human beings, which might not be in the good mood, or really dependent on some weather condition or whatever. Feel free to switch the subject. It's, for me, it's the most important thing. Right. Thank you very much, and uh, we need to round up uh, and uh, to conclude on, on the top of all the valuable ideas mentioned, uh, I'd like to highlight understanding by design. So that's that's the it's the quite promising approach in 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 the planning the work and the, the planning first, and then uh, we can fill in each part of the lesson, each part of the process by not forgetting a student as a human being with the emotions and feelings but at the same time not forgetting the learning objectives and as well standards and our curriculums that highlight the language and at the same time content aspects. Thank you very much for Anna, the flow, Christine, Eva and Eva.